Well, we, uh, we're on the way to go see the property that you guys seen in last week's vlog, um, where I was talking with the seller. She lives in New York. She wants to buy a new investment property and she inherited this property. Um, so we're headed to go meet her uncle at the property. He maintains the property because she's long distance. And uh, we're gonna just see the property. We're gonna take some pictures of the inside and see the condition of it, really get a good, good, good assessment kind of of what it uh of of what it takes to fix this property my target price is around forty thousand i know she dropped the price of fifty thousand before um we'll see how it goes um she could either take it or not take it but we might get in a little negotiation tip but i got a good rapport with her she seems like a good person um I'm gonna get her cash and get it done with. Is that right, Francis? Yep. You didn't hear what I said. Yes, you built a good report. <laughs> you do a report. That's what I say, report? Where am I? Third report, report, <laughs> report. I mean, that's the name of the game, right? I mean, get, build a good report. If you have the chance, she, she uh, opens up and then you go right in and build a report with her then. Uh, the good thing she has plans with this money um and i'm just trying to envision her to to spend it so the quick the good thing is we can close in 10 days if we wanted to yeah it's a nice property it's you know nice marketable so we can either rehab it or we can or we can wholesale it yeah. um the options is the main thing is control the title control the property and then you can do what you want to do with it after that I mean um, we might have a Hispanic buyer that probably buy it from us right away but we might we might rehab it ourselves we'll see yeah we have to see how much work it needs because it's, uh, it's a little I mean, they haven't really updated it for a little bit mm -hmm. but uh, you know Curve appeal is great. Yeah, I like how yeah, long yeah, the. It looks great. It looks nice front yard, nice big. Even though it's on a main road, the front yard is big enough to where you don't get that feeling. Yeah. Reminds me of Wallingford. The little entryway right there. Yeah, well, even the appliances are from the 1965. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the oven building is the original. Mm -hmm. It still works. Stove top still works. The uh, dishwasher. These windows, this is how they open. The original windows. Oh, wow, okay. I need that to get some air anyway. Last summer, there was a couple of windows broken and we replaced those, mm -hmm. get those cleaned up. Yeah, had an intercom system. <laughs> so he built it top notch when yeah. in the 60s. It, there's, a, there's a speaker outside that you, mm -hmm. you know, talk to the folks in here. And I think there's one in one or two of the bedrooms. This is the den as he built it. So this this house is kind of untouched. Right. How long has it been vacant? Uh, well, Doris died in November of 2015. Mm -hmm. And her cousin in New York inherited the house and she came down for a few months and she went back to New York and she came down. Her daughter, they come back and forth periodically. Okay. They might stay a couple of months. And that's who I'm talking to right now. You're talking to the daughter. Mm -hmm. And this living room, if this was a car, I'd say it's a 1965 model with about 300 miles on it. My aunt wouldn't allow anyone to come in. I know. This is <laughs> you her, know how black people was her. in their room. Yeah, that's right. This Surprise, is ain't no plastic on the front. This is her, you know, look at it room from the door, and that's it. Every once in a while, she, she was in a club, and they'd have a little meeting in here. Mm -hmm. They'd last about an hour, and then that was it. Y'all get up out of here. Get out. <laughs> don't, don't, you know, this is just exactly how she, and this furniture actually came from their old house uh, before they had the house built. So this mm -hmm. stuff is like from... Uh, I'd say late 50s, early 60s, uh, and wow, she kept it just this nice. I don't think the fireplace has ever been used. This. A 
looks like 1938. It's awesome. Yeah, fire. Look at that brick. That fireplace has never been used. Right, it's this level. Francis, look at that brick. That's, a, that's the original, because they don't even make brick like that anymore. If you see how the smaller grooves in it. Yep. And first of all, it's longer than a traditional brick now. Yep. Look at the grout. Almost yep. like the day they put it in there. Yep. This, how, <laughs> this room was just was looking at. Oh. Never been burned in there. Never had, never had a fire in there. No. no. What kind of work did he do? He worked at Audrey Real Tobacco Company. Same place I did. <laughs> I, I've been telling J-Rock as he's been following me around and, and I can tell him some of the, the more black affluent neighborhoods where you, you know, some of them well-to-do, like the house we bought in Wallingford. Yeah. You can know it was a black neighborhood and it's still a black neighborhood, mm -hmm. but it's clean. And I said, these people right. built these houses. They lived in, our, they worked for RJR. Right, they did. Uh, there was a place actually in, in uh, down right straight down the road as a matter of fact mm -hmm. uh, just past uh Evergreen cemetery mm -hmm. it's called reynolds town on the right they just put a plaque up yeah a, a actual sign up uh last year or so but it was mostly reynolds people mm -hmm. who lived in that neighborhood and they bought those houses there and they worked around those mostly black folks mm -hmm. and it's just always been that way uh, the neighborhood pretty much passed from Generation, yep, generation, down, yep. And they finally put a big sign up said Reynolds Town. Yeah. Yes. Pretty cool. Those days where you can't find companies like that to work for no, no more. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I worked there for 37 years. Mm -hmm. That was absolutely the best company I ever you could imagine to work for. Um, I went in, and I have a high school education. Mm -hmm. I went in sweeping the floor. And I actually begged for the job because I was working somewhere else. And I, would, I had a girlfriend who father worked at Reynolds mm -hmm. and I asked her what I asked him what his boss man's name was one night he told me <laughs> so I get off my regular my job and go down and have that guy page and I did it three <laughs> times and you know first time he came down I told him I said you know I know Ben Patterson he works for you and you know I'm kind of looking to get in the door here you know so I told him why you know so the third time I paged him he came down he didn't say anything he said just take the, well this is all he said take this piece of paper with Reynolds building to see Mr. Yates Monday morning and I was expecting the job interview and I went over I was right on time I went upstairs he called me in and first thing he said was when you want to start then even interview me he said when you want to start and he was persistent I, he liked your persistence so I told him I said well I'm working for Haynes your right guns. now yeah. and I said I need to give them a couple of weeks notice I don't just walk out on him. he said I'm glad you said that because at least I know you're hiring somebody. I'm hiring somebody who will think that way for me. Mm -hmm. So, actually, what I did, they wanted me to work second shift at Reynolds. I was already working second shift at Haynes. I know how Reynolds was when you were first hired. You weren't permanent. Mm -hmm. They hired you later on permanently, but they can lay you off any time. So I didn't quit Haynes. I just switched shifts. Ah. So I went to day shift at Haynes, and I worked there mm -hmm. and go straight to Reynolds at four o'clock in the evening. So I worked both jobs for like three months. And then Reynolds finally hired me on permanently. Yeah. And I put my notice in at Haynes. And yeah. I've 37 years. Wow. And this is where the, the sump is. This is kind of like a makeshift that's kind of dab. Yeah, they had that little portable sour install. The sump is under here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got a sump in here. It's a sump pump. Uh -huh. Do the water get all the way to the sun pump here? It has at times, I believe. If it really rains hard, uh -huh. uh, I think a drain was stopped up once and uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. it got water in. But there were, the, were, I've uh -huh. actually had to come and dry it out once in the past year and a half. Since Darth died, I've had to come out once and, and do some mopping. And where, where would the water come from, do you know? What's I'm not sure. I was, yeah. it, it was It'd be hard to know. It was really in this area right here. So uh -huh. I'm thinking some kind of way it was coming in here. Uh -huh. Because this is where yeah, look at it that. was wet. That uh, can be condensation. Ooh. Yeah, but. No, it, was, it had to be rain because it was it was right after really heavy rain. So right through here. Yeah, I'm thinking that's where it was coming from. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah there's to take all this out. Yeah. yeah. And that paneling. Yeah, yeah we we remove 65. we remove all that paneling yeah. and because it hides problems. It does. It because does. here's one of the big things that a lot of people underestimate when we 
flip. Mm -hmm. When we flip it and, and put it back retail with a conventional loan, mm -hmm. there's an inspector that comes here and right. tears us apart. I understand. Well, I ain't yeah. gonna take too much of your time. Um, I'm gonna walk nice around. Meeting you. Nice meeting yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice we. Stories. Yeah. Great you got story. you got enough. You yeah. know, because we got to fix the where the water is coming in and no. You, and you looked at that the stairs going down yeah that's that, a, that clogs up a lot too. correct we had to on, clean that out on every house there. yeah uh, i think that's where a lot of water come in too but yeah. there's a lot of different places it's a big a lot of square footage all together and that surprise is two sense. bedroom that is crazy yeah. yeah well he had a daughter they had a daughter it was an, an adopted daughter mm -hmm. uh, and she grew up i mean she, they raised her from a child to send her to college mm -hmm. and after she left that's it was just those two. Yeah, that's all they needed. That's all they needed. Probably convert that one den or something, or that little small one, into a bedroom. Yeah. Well, that den is a little too small for a bedroom. You can hardly turn around. You'd have to put a, I don't know what you put in there. <laughs> <Food>. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of small. I, kid. I thought about that. Yeah, a kid yeah. room. Something. Kid. Yeah. yeah. Paint it white, it looks bigger. I don't bigger. know. We'll check and see if it's, I don't know if it's. <laughs> yeah, because you got you to gotta add a closet and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know. But a bedroom makes a, you know, a big, difference. big difference. When you put on the market, you get that 125. Yeah. It's the difference between, yeah, it could yeah. be like $30,000 difference. Really? Can you believe it? Wow. Yeah. Because two bedroom is not marketable. Nobody wants a two bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's Especially got families. Young folks who have, yeah. who have kids. What's, oh. what's, a, what's an acre of land with yeah. two bedrooms? Yeah. <laughs> you need kids. Build a little house for my kids. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you got enough land to do it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Maybe put them, put them on this side of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> so worry about I appreciate your time, sir, and uh, we'll meet Ron. again. And what was, what was your name again? I'm Ron. Ron. Ron Max. Crawford. Max. Ron Crawford. Right. Maybe I'll see you down. I, I recognize your car, so if you see me waving you down, because right. I live downtown, I work downtown, so if, okay. I, if I see you around, I'll wave you down. All right. Nice meeting you. If you see a policeman, follow me. That's normal. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I know what you mean. Thank you, sir. Francis, you know what? I am really, really surprised. I am really surprised how good of a shape the house is in. Yeah, but it's... I know, it's completely outdated. It doesn't matter. But my point is, the house is actually in good shape. Mm -hmm. Like, you can live in it right now. What I'm surprised is of that basement. That basement's impressive. I mean, I mean, it looks like a... It's a whole nother... It's, yeah, it's a whole nother house. And did you see that, um, that geodata, the, the land? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a little weird because, it, you know... So it goes, they own this woods. See the land, the dead ends oh, right there? it's here. The yeah. And it goes like this yep. that or that way. Yep, and then... Oh, so it, it, that's what they owe from yep. here all the way to there. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So what is your renovation cost? No, I mean... I think this is, you know, it's it's such a big project, really, that you... You know, we need to, we need to move it because... Just ask, ask about, it, what's, what's the renovation cost, your estimate? Right. If you want to, I mean... I mean, you're talking about forty thousand, really. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to yeah, and forty thousand. I'm not sure it could even be forty-five because of the of the uh, they call it the, the you have to do the roof, and it seems like you have to do also the air. Mm, yeah, you're gonna have to do the air. Yeah. So you're gonna so right there, you it's almost ten thousand. Unless, you know, we get a good deal somewhere, but, and then the house is so big, there's just a lot of, a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're going to, sorry guys, I forgot you guys were there. We're going to wrap this up real quick. Um, I'll, you guys are going to listen in on the phone call. I'll negotiate the deal. We'll get a contract sent out and get this signed today. What the number is, I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna get a deal. I like the property. I think it's something that we can easily sell fast or we can rehab either way. So um, 
yeah, we'll, we're gonna grab a bite to eat, head back to the office and start negotiating. I'll see you guys soon. Hello? How you doing? Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, hi man. How are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? I'm good, did I catch you at a good time? Sure, you can talk. Good, so I went and seen the house. Okay. And even better yet, I seen your uncle's car. <laughs> I knew you was gonna say something about it. <laughs> he let me drive it up and down the street. No, he did not. You right, he wouldn't let me, he wouldn't even let me get near that thing, but he did open the door so I could look inside. Oh, <laughs> man, he got he got a nice ride. And that's one of many. I, I mean, should I say? Nah, he's very. about his collection. Well, he he's very. Let's just say he's a very humble man, and he said he's got a tiny garage that he likes to tinker around with cars. That's all he said. He's he's very humble. I'm 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 glad to see he's doing well for himself. Yes, indeed, right? Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. We we talked. We I was I probably met with him for like an hour because I'm real fascinated about like the, you know um, working in the for the old RJR company and like downtown. Like I live in one of the old buildings that he used to work in and stuff like that. So just just talking to him about the history was pretty cool. Okay, okay, so that was cool. That was a connection. Exactly, exactly. So, but I looked at the house. I'll tell you what, um, you said it was your, was it your aunt or uncle or? That yeah, it was my aunt. They are very, very clean people. Yes. So when you said the house, yes. when you said the house was in livable condition, I understand what you're saying. It's clean. It's, it's, it's a clean house. Um, mm -hmm. now we did, we did see the water in the basement and kind of where it's coming from, you know, that's going to be a process digging back the walls and, and getting that all sealed up. But that's kind of what I expected without even seeing the inside already. Okay. But the, the house is, I think it was built in 1965. I believe so. Yes. And it looks exactly like 1965 on the inside. Like I could, I could shoot. <laughs> I could shoot a TV show called That 65 <laughs> right inside. <laughs> I wouldn't have to spend any money. I wouldn't have to spend any money on building the set. It's just perfect. The living room is awesome. But, you know, so it's here's the plus side. It's a real nice. It's, it's a clean house. Um, the, okay. ba the, the basement is big, um, just means we spend, you know, a little bit more money. Um, you know, the, the water issues there, we know we got to replace the roof. One of the bad things about the house, it's a two bedroom. And I, and, I know. and your uncle gave me the backstory of, you know, how they adopted a daughter and they raised her and then they built that. They didn't, they didn't need the extra room. So they didn't, it didn't mean nothing. So I understand why they built it like that. Um, I'm gonna have to try my best to turn it into a three bedroom. Here I am talking like I already got the house. Look at me. <laughs> but I, I think it'll make I think it'll make a cool project for us. Um, I think your uncle will be happy that what we do with it. I think you'll be happy what we do with it. Now now you and I just gotta agree on that cash price. Okay. So. Um. Did you see the land that it sits on? I did. It's it's point nine two acres. It's it's a. I mean that's that's what I like about the house. It's it's you know. So the downside, it's on a busy road. But the upside, the front yard is big enough that you really don't feel like you're living on a busy road. Yeah, it does. Right. Uh -huh. So I'm just being a hundred percent honest with you. I mean, it's a, it's a. There's a lot of pluses. There's some negatives. But I still feel like I'm going to spend around forty-five to fifty thousand dollars making it a two thousand eighteen house. Yeah. Yeah. About that, you think? Yeah, I, I think I can get it done, and those are my prices. I mean, I don't have. 
if if a homeowner if a homeowner tried to do it, they would spend closer to seventy. Um, you got the hookup because you got you got an uncle that would come down there and do it for basically cost. I don't have that hookup. <laughs> So, so you have the contractors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. All, all my all my workers are contractors. I have one carpenter that is salary, but everybody else is 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 strictly uh you know contractors. But I get good prices because I keep them working. So I won't I won't say that I I, I pay the most expensive prices, but I do I do I do get a good price, and that's why I'm able to do jobs cheaper than most homeowners can do it for themselves. Gotcha. Okay. So. So, um, are you interested in buying? You know, I already told you I'm, I'm already envisioning what I'm going to do with the, the, the inside and you, you playing with me now. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I get it. No, I'm just, I was just asking. I was just asking. What about the front? You see, like, the little car? The, the garage is fairly good. You know, yeah. Like big size, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's good. It just needs some new walls in it. Nothing nothing major. That, that, I mean, it's just the major systems have to be updated. The roof, the AC, um, and fix some water issues. We're going to update the bathroom and the kitchens. Those, I mean, those. that's where you spend all the money at, unfortunately. But we know what it's going to cost to fix it. We, and, it, and it's a two bedroom. I got to try to make it into a three bedroom and still have a, a, a flowable space. Um, but gotcha. but that's 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 my problem and not yours. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So what I, I, I know what you want to do with the money. I just want to think, you know, what do you what do you what do you need to walk away with so that you're happy and. I can make a profit, you know, in six months when I when I sell it. Now, are we including the lot on the side in this or no? <clears throat> I didn't. Is there a lot on the side? Yeah, it is. I just want the the point nine, whatever the house sits on. Okay, so whatever the house is. On. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Is, if there's a separate deeded lot, I don't know about that one. Um, and you and you did explain to me that the home can't go for anything more than what's in the prop in the area, correct? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try my best. I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna try my best to try to get about one nineteen, one twenty out of this house, and. It's not like the TV show where that's what I get to keep. You know, I still got to pay 6% for the realtor, some closing costs, you know, all that stuff. I'm looking right. to, yeah, I'm looking to profit altogether. You know, I, I don't even know what exactly the, the, the what I would want to profit, but I know it, it, it equals out to a percentage. Okay, so what would you want to buy the home for? Give me a figure. One dollar, but that's not that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you asked me what I would like to buy it for, but <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that's a big difference, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a big difference. Here, here's a better question: What are you comfortable with with cash? Now, when we say cash. At the end of the closing, like I'm going to pay all the closing costs, I'm going to take care of all the attorney fees. What are you wanting to have a check sent to your house or a wire? What are you happy with that it's in the bank and you no longer have to deal with it? And your uncle said he's tired of cutting that grass, by the way. I'm, okay, Max. I, I appreciate the information. <laughs> he said he's said he ready to cut that grass. Um... I was hoping like seventy five. You know I can't do seventy five. Well, what could you do? I, I asked. Yeah, I know. I'm just, just. I know we going, we going back and forth talking here. Here's the reality. I'm gonna spend fifty grand, and I'm gonna try to make. If I can make twenty thousand, and have around. Let me let me let me do some real numbers, okay? Let me let me pop this in my calculator and tell you exactly okay. exactly what I what what would be a good number.
how'd you go? How'd you go from uh, seventy-five? We was talking about sixty thousand the other day. But you know what? I forgot how much land I it was sitting on, so my uncle reminded me. This, you know, land. I know land is very scarce up there in New York. Out Nothing here, down there. It ain't. It ain't. Yeah. It's. It's. I wish it was that much of a value. Um. Let me. Uh. I'm doing. I'm doing. You some, want to call me back? No. You, you busy? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just. I'm just doing some numbers. Okay. <laughs> Because if I start pulling panels off the wall um, and I find find stuff that I ain't see before, you ain't going to give me a refund. <laughs> nope. All right, you ready for my number? Yes. Hold on to your seat. I'm sitting. All right, 42,000. And I really did the math too. So that's not just the ballpark. That's the figure. Yeah, I mean that's 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 me being comfortable. You know, that's because what it is, I I I I I know I'm gonna spend fifty, but I always put ten percent for these uh ohs, like a house I'm working on right now. I found termites pretty much everywhere. And, you know, when you buy it as is, you can't, you can't ask for a refund or you can't say, hey, I got a problem. You already, it don't matter to you. So, but this is cash out the door. And I think by the time I'll have about 95, close to 100,000 in it. And, they, and these are real numbers. I'm going to, here's what it's going to look like. Let's just say I get 120 out of it. From, from the real estate. And I'm gonna minus 6% because that's what it costs to sell it. I'm at 112.8. So I'll make, if I got 95 in it, right? And I'm not even gonna take closing costs. I'll make 17,000 after spending almost 100 grand. And and when I say I, I mean the company. Not Max. Don't get to put that in his pocket. I know what you mean, Max. And and how soon do you guys close? Give me ten days. And what you said it was fifty. The number. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you slick. You know that I need you on my team. <laughs> I need you on my team. Forty-two. <laughs> Forty-two. Okay. Forty-two. Okay. Would I have to come down here? Can you pay for it? You nope. I'll send everything to you. FedEx. An attorney will take care of everything from here forward. You you you'll never have to come down here. I mean, unless you want to clean out and take certain personal items. I don't know if you and your uncle. Here's what I'll do. If we if we do four if we do forty two, I will lend your uncle two of my workers for a full day. And they'll move whatever he wants them to move wherever they want them to move it to. What about forty six with two workers? That's that's a big jump. I I can't do that high. I'm really like 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 on the honest train. I was 42 was like a good number. I can come up maybe 500. I can come up a thousand dollars. Let's do 43 because I like you. We like each other. <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah, I think we do. Well, you ain't you ain't cuss me out. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. 
I mean, New York, you're supposed to cuss me out. By now, if you ain't like me, then I know we we good now. <laughs> yeah, we're on a good train. We're on a good train. All right, let me um let me process it and I call you back. Give so, me an hour. so let let's let's talk about this before you hang up, okay? So okay. I'm I'm gonna do forty three thousand, uh-huh. and then I'm a, that's what you that's a check you take home, okay? You don't you don't have to okay. come you don't have to come to North Carolina, and and I'm gonna give you. Two, I'm gonna give your uncle two of my workers so he don't have to pick up anything. He just points. <laughs> I mean that's that's a big deal. I know he don't want to move all that stuff. Actually, yeah, no. Because um, only thing I wanted to part with is my pictures and. Um, oh, which pictures was yours? Because I ain't seen it. I I was looking too. I all my pictures was my little little pictures of me. A little baby pictures. Yeah. Oh, okay. You probably seen one in the den. Say it again. I said you probably seen one of my pictures in the den. Oh, I know I did because I looked at all the pictures. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I was. I'm, I'm. I like history. I like looking at. You know, when you walk into somebody's house, you look. You know, you look around. I pay attention. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely history. That home. It is. The bar down did I do? Yes, I did. I wish it was a wet bar, but it's just, it doesn't have a um, a sink at it. You know, well, are you going to make it a wet bar? Possible. It depends on how the plumbing is set up. It's just a lot. It's, it, when, wow. the, when the basement is that big, it's all about how much, so it's so much money because downstairs is bigger than upstairs. It literally is. Yeah. So that's, it's, essentially, that's a whole nother house for me to renovate. It's good, like on the back end. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a whole nother house for me to spend money on. That's why it costs so much. Cause I can't do the upstairs and not do the downstairs. No, that's not an option. Yeah. So who do you, so that's the favorite part of the party. exactly? Who you so who you gonna talk to 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 make sure you feel good about this? My Okay. I like him too. He's a good man. Yes, he is, and he's a fair man as well. Yeah, and he and, and I explained to him too, and I told him that it's a lot of work. It's a, it's a lot of work, and when this project is all said and, and done, he does that. yeah, I'm gonna have about ninety five, maybe a hundred thousand in it. And I'm gonna try to sell it for one twenty, and I, what I can promise you is I'm, I'm gonna take pictures and send them to you when I'm done, so you'll be like, wow, okay, I see why he had to spend that much money. Gotcha. So you gonna call me back in an hour? I'll call you back in an hour. It's three o'clock. What time is it now? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Yes. I'll, I'll see, call you back by four. I'll see you at four. Okay. Okay. I'll All right. See you at four. All right. Bye bye. So that's about the real number I came up with. Is is about forty two, forty two eight actually. Yeah, but you see, this thing. 42 is great, okay? We will make money for 42, but that, that, hog, that house is huge. Whoever is not, that's a no man's land, and for a flipper, that's not a money maker. Of course, yeah. Because it will cost too much money to fix. Yeah. So only for somebody like Alberto, which he's doing flipping to, to save money. That's cra- isn't that crazy? Yeah, isn't that crazy? What happens? He'll spend twenty, thirty thousand on the house, forty thousand, and then when he sells it, he'll have a hundred thousand. Even if he doesn't make a profit, he will not save that money if he does not invest it. Makes sense. You know what I mean? Right now he's selling this house and he says, and he says, you know, and I said, yeah, a lot of co- yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not making money, but. I'm saving the money, and I would not have this money if I not done it this way. So puts it, he puts it where he knows it makes sense. Well, he knows he's gonna, you know, he's sort of putting it like in a bank account. He's not gonna touch it. Otherwise, he goes to, you know, Cabo San Lucas for a couple of weekend, for a weekend. He's like me. All right, guys. So you just seen what I did. Now here's the mistake, and 
she is one of the decision makers, but not the decision maker. Normally, I would not let them off the phone without a yes or a no, because a maybe is a deal killer. So I have a good rapport with her, so I feel like I'm gonna get what I need done. But in the few, if you're doing this, try to get the decision maker on the phone, which I understand if you've seen when I was at the house with the uncle, you understand that she's acting on behalf of her mother. So I, I expected there to be a I call you back conversation. Um, so that's why I didn't push too hard for an answer right now. Um, but I keep you up to date. I think 42 will make some good money and we'll see what happens. I think both sides win. It's not fair. Uh, it's not unfair. I think it's, it's the real numbers. And I was, you know, I gave her the real number and I think, I think we're going to be okay. So I'll keep you guys up to date. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm sitting by the phone patiently waiting for you. I highly doubt patiently waiting, but you were waiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so listen, this is this here's the thing. Someone else that came by after you had left, mm -hmm. and um, he had mentioned the offer to me yesterday because he had already seen the property as well. Okay. And he was coming back to pay uh, with, I guess, one of his contractors or so. So um, my uncle said he came in with a, a, a good little team. And I guess they were going over some figures. So I wanted to see, based off of what he sees today, will his figures still be the same? Mm -hmm. And um, that's all I'm really waiting for. Okay. So I don't want to have you patiently waiting or, you know, I want to keep you heads up. I'm glad you're honest with me. I'm an honest person. Okay. So you ain't really getting nothing less than that from me. I like that. Make sure, and here's what I would tell you. We've been doing this for a while, so make sure that these people going to give you an offer actually have the ability to close right okay. there's there's a difference between putting an offer on a house and a difference between buying a house okay do you get what i'm saying i got you my reputation is strong okay. you'll have your money in 10 days okay so there's there's okay make sure that person can do what they say they're going to do got you i'll be waiting okay. for you how you doing this business Say that again. How long have you been doing this business? I've been doing this full time for almost three years. And I know it may, may not sound like a lot, but I buy about 10 houses a month. So my, my, what I do in a year, most people don't do in 10. No, actually, I, I was going to say for you to say three years. And this, that, this business, it seems like <clears throat> some people don't last past six months. <laughs> Correct, because they don't. See, here, here's the thing, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. We're a group of four investors. So the money we have compared to what other people have, they just don't have it. And the experience we have on our team, I mean, we have one guy that's flipped over 100 houses, like literally flipped over 100 houses. So that gives us the experience in the upper hand that most people can't, and we act quick. And, okay. and my office is upstairs from the attorney. So I got a slight advantage. <laughs> got you. So, so, what, so when we set a closing date, it happens. Got you, okay. Well, um, yeah, my, my, my uncle seems pretty amazed with you, uh, so. He's a good man, he's a real, I'm, and I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to get a deal. He's really a good man now. And I was intrigued because like I said, I love history and I live in a lot. Of, I live in the quarter, the downtown quarters where a lot of history is, but the the black side of the history of town is not told. So I was interested to learn more about from him. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So um, as soon as I get a hold, is what's the latest I can call you on this number? As soon as I get a hold of the other guy, I'll give you a call back. About thirty minutes. No, I'm just joking. But um, <laughs> oh. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But um, no, it'd be good if I knew before the end of the day, which, you know, would be would be ideal. But I understand you also try you want to get the best price possible. I'd be doing the same thing, too. Um, just I appreciate that. just Thanks. just if you can't get a hold of them now, then what, what happens later? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure he's going to give me a call because he said he would. And he told my uncle he was as well. So, I mean, I was just waiting to see. 
uh, what he was going to say. And then I was waiting for my uncle to finish up what he was doing and give me a call back. Okay, yeah, he cutting that grass, ain't he? I think he did cut it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me a shout. Give me a call. Give me a text. Whatever you got to do, I'll, I'll be around. If I'm not in my office, okay. it rings to my cell phone. Okay, got you. All right. Not a problem. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. So the suspense continues. And I kind of wanted to walk you guys through an entire deal. Hopefully this happens today so you can actually see from the phone call to the appointment to negotiating the deal until we get a deal. So we'll see what happens. All right, so unfortunately it's 7.35 and I haven't got a return call about the offer. Um, as you guys see, she says she's dealing with somebody else that's submitting an offer and um, we're, uh, we're just kind of waiting, but I'm gonna shoot her a text. I've, I built a good rapport with her, so I wanna kind of uh, give her an opportunity to, to source that, but then I'm gonna tell her we need to move on the deal. So I would have loved to give you an update for this this vlog, um, but it looks like you're gonna have to wait till the next one. But you kind of seen how this process works. And once we get this deal, if we get this deal, I'm gonna show you how to move forward with it, at least in another vlog and what we're gonna do with it. All right, guys, see you later. Peace.